Welcome to Hope Talks Podcast with Grayson Willis and Pastor Margaret Michael, where you'll hear inspiring stories that are filled with hope and good news in Jesus Christ. You can also search for our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and TuneIn. We would love your feedback and invite you to take a short, anonymous survey. You can find the link to the survey in the show notes. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. And I'm Pastor Margaret Michael. It is so good to uh, be here today with you, and today I'm just so excited. We have another guest. <laughs> Aren't we grateful, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Grayson, for our guests? And um, today we are joined by Ashley Gordon Becker. Ashley, it's so good to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's just so amazing how we live in this valley, and we kind of go in and out of one another's lives, right? Like we see each other. Um, there was a, a time where we were in communication, and then we weren't, and then it happened again, right? Um, as you are working now at uh, Way to Go, and our paths crossed again um, when um, I reached out. Way to Go is a nonprofit here in the Valley that we'll hear more about in a little bit. But yeah, a nonprofit that is here in the Valley that I really believe in. And so we wanted today to hear your story, but yeah. to hear about Way to Go. And I think it's something that our community probably doesn't know a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. So we will get to that mm -hmm. in a little bit. But before we go there, I would love to hear you're a Valley girl, right? Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you grew up. What was that like? So, yes, I am um, from here. Actually, I was born in Shenandoah County, but we moved here when I was five. Okay. And uh, grew up here locally, went to school here, graduated from Spotswood, then uh, went off to college, and then moved to the D.C. area mm -hmm. and was there for about 11 years and then uh, moved back to um, the Valley when I wanted to, you know, start a family and raise my kids here because this is definitely a place that I knew I wanted to raise my family um, and so I'm back here and um, always had a special place in my heart for um, human services, nonprofit work. Growing up here, uh, I grew up and ha was a member and still am a member at uh, Mass Nutton Presbyterian Church and uh, mission work, volunteer work was always a big part of that, um, especially uh, my mom got me into that. Mm -hmm. And so always knew that that's kind of where I wanted to end up yeah. as far as yeah. my career went. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned that your mom did a lot of work, uh, service work, I think you said, uh, helping people and uh, that that's kind of where you got the heart for it. So if you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's actually an interesting story because that's why I am at way to go. Mm. So grew up, um, at Mastodon Presbyterian Church, and I'm still a member there. And my mom was an eligibility worker at Harrisonburg Rockingham Social Services for many, many years. And she saw the need through her clients for transportation, especially being that we live in such a rural community. And she actually served on our session with a member of your church mm -hmm. um, who used yeah. to be a member of ours, uh, Sherry Klein. Yes. And they both saw the need, um, uh, how critical the need was for transportation services, especially for low income working families. And so uh, my mom actually helped secure the first donation for way to go when they got started um, a little over 18 years ago. And so a few months ago, when I had kind of been looking for a, another job opportunity, I was working for a nonprofit, but um, it had taken me more, it had taken me more throughout the mid-Atlantic region um, of the East Coast. And so I really wanted to get back to local nonprofit work. And Sherry reached out to me because way to go had a potential opening. And uh, through some of our communication, Sherry told me the story, how um, my mom and her had worked together through the, on the session mm -hmm. and um, how my mom had been really instrumental in getting that first donation for Way to Go. And 
at that point, at that moment in my life, that was kind of one of those God moments that you have. Yeah. And I knew in my heart that this was the path that I was supposed to be on. Um, that way to go was where I was meant to be. Um, and uh, I remember that phone conversation. I think Sherry was out taking one of her morning walks and mm-hmm. I was in the car having just dropped my kids off at school. And I think we were probably both crying. Um, and so um, that's, kind of how that happened. And I'm just uh, so excited to be at way to go and be serving my local community again. Um, and the people that live and reside within Harrisonburg and Rockingham County. You know, I just, I think about, um, you didn't know that your mom was instrumental in that. I did not. (laughs) Um, and the legacy, that's just the word that comes to me, this legacy that's been, I'm going to cry out, um, <laughs> the legacy that's being handed down. It was already planted in your heart. Um, you were other places, but you came back here. And the timing, um, we had talked a little bit before the program, but the timing of that, um, how that all came together. I say this often, we just can't make this stuff up, right? Yeah. But God, he has this plan and order that amazes me how things fall in place um, as we are seeking what to do next. Mm-hmm. And Psalm 139 5 says that he goes before us every step of the way. And I just love that idea that he, uh, an author said one time, he gives us just enough light for the step we're on. You know, we don't get to see way down the road, right? But, and just in that seeking, how that all came into play for you. So I'm grateful for what your mom and uh, Sherry started there. Um, and it's been a program I know that our church has engaged in for many years and there's quite a few cars that were on the road I don't know if they're still there on the road but over the years there's been quite a few cars so so grateful for this program because we are in a rural community like you said and there's it makes transportation a little harder than if you live in the big city it does and so way to go's main mission is to keep working families working And uh, you can't do that if you don't have transportation. And so we provide those critical transportation support services to those low income working families, whether it's providing them with a donated vehicle that we receive from our very generous uh, community donors or providing them with repair services for the vehicles that they already have. Um, helping with uh, DMV registration fees, um, you know, things that have to do with their tags. Um, We also work with uh, Harrisonburg Rockingham Social Services a lot uh, with the program that they have. Um, We put people through driving school so that they can actually, especially with our being a refugee community, people that come to this country, if they need to obtain a driver's license. So go through the driving courses and obtain the driver's license and then, you know, get a vehicle that way. So there are a lot of different ways that we support people. Um, even if it's just, they fall behind and they need help with an insurance payment Mm -hmm. or, um, their monthly loan payment. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different ways that we can support, you know, our working families, uh, within our community. Yeah, and I think that's something that, especially for churches, you know, that's something that we all have people that, you know, may need those services from time to time. And um, depending on budgets and those types of things, it may be hard for maybe a smaller church or whatever to to be able to help those situations, but to know that there is a partner. Right. And that's what I believe is so important in the community, that we know who is in the community that is doing the work and we partner, um, I think it's so much cleaner and easier because you all, that's your craft. You know exactly how to do it. You know all of those things. And so I'm excited today just for people to learn about what an awesome program this is. We have had quite a few people over the years that have had to go this route. And even with a car repair, you know, that was not too awfully long ago. We had one of those if you would like to share some, I say general, but like without using names, just share some stories of how way to go has impacted individuals in our community. So um, recently we have helped uh, a young mother 
um, who has an infant, and she was spending around $600 a month in ride share fees. So Uber, Lyft, um, to get to work and the grocery store and the doctor. Um, and think about the level, the challenge that it adds when it is an infant, because then you're taking a car seat yeah. in the ride share service with you to all of these places. So not just the financial burden, but then, you know, you're taking a baby to these places. So you're having to carry around the car seat and the car seat carrier and the, you know, what you need to put into the vehicle um, for safe transportation. And so she's been doing this for months to get to all of these places. And so um, within the last week, we were able to get her into a safe, reliable donated car that one of our donors gave us and just, you know, to see the look on her face and just to know what this is going to do for her, not just financially, but for her and her child, um, the safety that it's going to provide for her to know that she's going to be able to wake up every morning and put her child in a safe car and get to work and get to the grocery store and get to the doctor, mm. um, get to childcare is just, you know, that's just one of the, yeah. just one of the small success stories that we can share. And, and the, that's, Sometimes people don't realize they might have that car sitting out in their garage that, oh, you know, we haven't, that had been driven for a few years, but you don't know, we might be able to fix it for a few thousand dollars. Or, you know, sometimes we can just take that car to recycle management and even getting a few hundred dollars that can go into repair services Mm -hmm. for someone else's vehicle or go into purchasing a vehicle for someone else. Every little bit does make a difference. Yeah, and I think about that young woman. When you have those types of challenges to get to work, I just think about, I mean, I have grandchildren, and the car seats these days, like, it takes a good bit to get it in and get it. I, I don't even want to take it out, ever, yes. you know, because then I, I have to get it back in. I have two still in car seats, and I'm still, I have to put my whole entire yes. body weight on it just to get it secured you know, snug and secure in the seat. Yes. I have just learned how to do that. (laughs) So I think about having to do that every day. And I think about how that would wear on someone and how this young woman never really probably dreamed that she would ever have a car of her own, you know, like, and just to think about what was over here, this person really didn't need setting in the garage, whatever, becomes an open door to someone succeeding in life and not ending up homeless because mm-hmm. they can't afford to pay the Uber. Plus, the list goes on and on. It does, and that's, you know, it's it's that one, because then you have to think about, you know, she also has a child, so child care, and child care is not cheap. Oh, no. And so... And that's the other thing about our program is we do have eligibility requirements. You know, this is for low income working families. We want to get them to work and keep them there. And so they do have to work a minimum of 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this young woman is working 30 hours a week. So she's a working single parent um, who's paying for childcare. And so transportation was just not something that she could afford at this time, you know, yeah. and so this has just opened so many doors for her. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. Powerful. And uh, you were talking about, you know, there might be somebody that has a vehicle laying around that might need some repairs, but that they don't use. And maybe they, in hearing our conversation, would want to donate that to way to go. What would be the best way for them to get in contact with you all, or even if somebody is in need of way to go services or knows of somebody that might be in need of those services. So if somebody's interested in donating a vehicle or has questions about any type of donation, um, they can either email me and it's Ashley at W the number two, the letter G Inc. dot org or the phone number 540 435 
3779. Or if you're interested in our services, um, you can call that same number or send an email. And then we would have your caseworker make a referral. Um, and so most of the caseworkers at the different um, human services organizations in the community uh, um, are familiar with way to go and the services that we provide. And if you just reach out to them, they will be more than happy to reach out to um, Megali Sagato, who is our client services coordinator and work with her to help um, obtain some services for you. You know, you shared one story, Ashley, but any other stories that you would like to share? I know you've said you've been there a short time, but um, maybe there's another nonprofit that would like to partner with Way to Go. You know, I think it's good for nonprofits to offer different services to be aware of each other and connect oh. with each other and helping people. So we do work with um, the Harrisonburg Rockingham Social Services Department. Um, one of our board members, Lori Petrie, she works there as well. And we work with one of her programs and help individuals get into vehicles. Um, that is mostly with our immigrant refugee community. And so recently, um, about a week and a half ago, we helped one of her clients that we partnered with um, who um, had come over from another country. And so we helped them get you know, they had to go to first, you know, there's the language barrier. So they're having to learn the language and then, you know, go and take the driving courses and then take the test. And so um, this woman was a single parent um, who also had their mother living in the home. Um, and so she was supporting, you know, not only her children, but also her mother. Yeah. And so we recently were able to get her into a vehicle um, partnering with um, the program at social services. So that's another program that we work with um, that we really appreciate the partnership that they provide for us. Yeah, I keep coming back to the word tapestry, but there is power in partnership. And I think that not only, you know, with the nonprofits, but with the churches too. And I'm sure if someone is listening today, and they're like, you know, I think this is something that our church would be interested in. I'm sure that you all would be more than happy to go and speak to a church or any group that would be interested in partnering with this. And so I always want to make sure that I mention those things because somebody might think about it, but they, it just is kind of a thought. But uh, I know that for me personally, having some folks here at the church that needed a vehicle. And, you know, it's one of those things where I think of one as a single mom um, that really needed a vehicle, but she has the child, she has school, and she has, um, there's all the things, much like the lady you was telling us about. And, like, we don't have the funds just to go buy someone a car, right? Mm -hmm. And so I shared with her about way to go. And it's not many times that I see her pull onto this parking lot that I don't think about where that car came from. And, you know, hers was one where there's a payment. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, like there is the donated cars, but then there's another way to get cars. And she had went that route. Yes, so we also have a program called Work Cars, and our Work Cars program we do with our partnership with F&M Bank, mm -hmm. and so that allows for um, working families that may not need a donated vehicle, that they're bringing in more money and they can afford to purchase a vehicle, but they can't afford to purchase like a nicer vehicle right. that, you know, they're still low income. Um, they're still, you know, that Alice population mm -hmm. or um, they still need a, some support. Yeah. And so we work with F and M bank and we do the, a budget with them and we see what may be, um, you know, financially possible for them. Mm -hmm. And then we work with them to come up with a payment and F and M 
is been so wonderful to work with. And, you know, the payment is not going to be, it's not going to be a high payment. Right. It's going to be something that they can afford. We're going to get them in a good, reliable, quality vehicle. Um, and they also can take some ownership of that yeah, because yeah, they're making that yeah. monthly payment. They're making that insurance yeah. payment. And so that's another really great program yeah. um, that we have. Um, and so thank you for bringing that up. And also with you talking about, you know, the relationships that we have in the community, we even have other nonprofits that have even donated vehicles to mm-hmm. us. So I think about um, the Harrisonburg Rockingham CSB, the Community Service Board. They've donated quite a few vehicles wow. to us that they had used for their organization. And then, you know, they're like, okay, it's time to get a new vehicle. And they've donated that vehicle to us. And we, in turn, were able to give that vehicle back to a family in the community. Yeah. And so um, we've even received donations that way through other organizations in the community yeah so yeah so that's been it, it's just been amazing to watch that if i'm not mistaken because I'm, I'm remembering someone calling one day and they were having some car repair needs and i said well have you thought about way to go and i think you have to have a reference though is that right you do yeah. you need to have a you referral have said that a referral a referral so since our clients are within that low income group of individuals, um, they would just have their caseworker refer them. Yeah. So it could, you know, be your caseworker at social services, um, at CSB. Um, we have people refer people from Mercy House, um, from CASA, you know, any yeah. organization. We've even had churches, a, yeah. you know, a church. If you have somebody that is a, a member of your church and you know that they um, need services. Yeah. Even somebody within the church can make that referral for yeah. them. Um, and I think that's just an important thing that people know. We don't really need to tell that individual to call, right. but we need to make that call kind of be that advocate for yes. them and make that connection mm-hmm. so that you know that there's someone in their corner, uh, someone that is advocating for them. Uh, I think is just another powerful piece of it that they don't go alone. You know, there's someone there that's walking with them and kind of walks them to way to go. Yes. Yeah. Ashley, as um, we're talking today, what are some ways that people listening can pray for way to go and pray for uh, those that you all are ministering to? Um, because I don't want to overlook the power of prayer in these situations. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, all of the individuals and families that we provide services for are within that low income group. And so they are going to have challenges that we don't always think about. So, you know, they might have the transportation challenge, but then they are families that have children. And so they're going to have a challenge when it comes to childcare. Um, you know, they're going to have food insecurity. Um, there are people that we provide services for that are homeless. And so they have, um, you know, housing insecurity, uh, you know, health disparities. There are all these different things come along with the different individuals and families that we provide services for. So, you know, providing prayer for any of those types of different needs is always appreciated. You know, everybody's reality is it's what you see and what you're faced with every day. And it's, it's different for everyone, but I think we take for granted sometimes being able to just walk out our front door, get in a car and go. And so many people don't have that opportunity to just be able to get into a vehicle, whether it's, you know, even living in the city, you know, public transportation. So there's so many things that people that live in the rural parts of our community that they don't have um, that right. opportunity to just walk outside, get in a vehicle, go to the grocery store, you know, go to the doctor. And so they are relying on someone else to provide that for them. And so, you know, just lifting those people up in prayer. Mm-hmm that they are provided with what they need is really important. 
just uh, in closing uh, the last couple minutes, anything that we haven't asked you already or that you haven't shared already that you would like to share? And I know you've shared some of this probably already, but in, since we call this program Hope Talks, anything that's given you the most hope right now or given you hope right now through Way to Go and through the ministry? I think being from this community, um, I've worked at other nonprofits in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County. And just, we live in such a giving, generous community. We really do. We are so fortunate. And I think people that move into this area, they live here for a short amount of time and they realize what an amazing place this is to live. And so I'm just really grateful to live here and be raising my family here um, and be part of this community. And so I think um, as you talked about the tapestry and how we're all kind of woven together and I just, I'm really thankful to be at way to go um, and to be able to provide these, you know, critical services to people in our community um, to be able to help them, you know, enrich their lives and their families' lives. Yeah. I think that, it takes, if each one of us can see beyond ourselves and we can look at the giftings that God's given us and realize that he didn't give them to us just because to help us succeed in our personal life, but he gave them to us. It's love God and love others, right? That's right. a great commandment. And so taking the giftings that we have and using them in the way that you're using them is using them for God's glory. Right. You know, it is for the good of um, the community. And you've talked a couple of times about coming to the Valley and uh, what a great place we have here. And, and you are right. I think those locals, um, including me, sometimes we don't realize I was in my small group from church and there's a few people that have moved over the past several years and that are in my small group and our last meeting this was what we talked about we had a whole lesson to do and the group wanted to talk about what it is to move from other places and to be here and the difference that they have found in this community they found nowhere else in the world and we don't really understand that right like because we're from here Grayson's kind of from here. Um, yeah, he's been what, here from here for a long yeah, time. but wasn't born here, but since I was seven. Yeah. So, but it is. Yeah. It is a, a great yeah. place and a beautiful place um, to be able to work together. So thank you for saying yeah. yes. And I'm yeah. grateful for your mom paving the way for you. Yeah. That probably is the piece of the tapestry for me that really just amazes me of how yeah. You didn't know that story, and as it unfolded with Sherry being that person that could mm-hmm. knit this piece back together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so grateful for Sherry and Paul and what they do uh, for the community and, and how they love Jesus and others. But I do want to say we have someone else from our church. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I would be amiss <laughs> if I talked for a half hour about way to go and didn't uh, mention Bill Troyer. Yes. Um, Bill worked here in the finance office for many years, has been such a faithful follower of Jesus and truly believes in giving to the community and still sits um, as the treasurer. Yes, is that he right? is the treasurer of our board. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, um, hats off to Bill mm-hmm. and his lovely bride, Chris. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We are very fortunate to have... Bill and I was just emailing with him this morning. So yeah. yes, <laughs> we're very, very fortunate to have Bill and Sherry on our board. Yes, from this for church. Sure. So. Yes, very good. Well, Ashley, it's been great to have you today. Thank you for joining us uh, for Hope Talks today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I pray that as we've talked to Ashley Gordon Becker today about a way to go in their ministry, that it truly has been a half hour of hope for your life. May God bless.
Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. Thanks for listening to today's podcast of Hope Talks. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe for updates and the latest episodes. Also, if you're in the Harrisonburg, Rockingham County area, we invite you to listen on the radio each Sunday at noon on 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX. 